Eight officers shot and killed in the line of duty in just the past 10 days. Five in Dallas two weeks ago and then three in Baton Rouge yesterday. These numbers, quite frankly, are shocking. Police officers killed by guns up 72% since this time last year. 72%, yes. We are joined now by Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb. Thank you so much for being here. I know a very busy time for you, so we appreciate the time. It's my pleasure. I want to be transparent uh, with our viewers. Initially, we booked this interview to talk about school security, which is one of your, your biggest passions, and we will get to that. But but with everything going on in the world, I think it'd be kind of kind of negligent not to at least mention the tension going on across the country. Eight officers in the past 10 days have been shot and killed. Your initial reaction when you continue to hear news like this? Uh, my initial reaction, those are my brothers. I'm a former law enforcement officer. There's an old adage, once a cop, always a cop. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an oath as a Secret Service agent. I had a badge, carried a gun. I worked with local law enforcement officers all around the country and all over the world on a regular basis uh, during during my career. Uh, so after the first initial thought of those are my brothers and they're fallen, it's the tragedy and it's condition of the heart. Uh, men's hearts need to change. And I think we heard that um, uh, desire and that outcry from Baton Rouge yesterday. A lot of the leaders said the same thing in the most recent tragedy. Uh, but there's something very wrong with our culture when men will prey upon other men, particularly those that take an oath mm -hmm. to protect and to serve and to stand in the gap on a regular basis. I'd say probably 99% of people agree with you that there is something very wrong here, but the, the conflict comes where we decide what do we do about this? What can be done? This brings up the gun debate. It brings up a lot of different things. In your mind, what should be done to fix this? I mean, 72% since this time last year up, police officers killed by guns. What can be done? Well, as I said, it starts in a, with the condition of the heart. No policy, no statute, no ordinance change or alters the condition of the heart. Uh, it's a culture right now, uh, not an over, overwhelming culture, but there's a, there's a underlying culture in America. And we're not just seeing it in America, but we're seeing it global with the recent events in uh, Turkey and the uprising there. Before that, just hours before that, uh, France, mm -hmm. uh, another tragic event in, in that country. Uh, so I don't think the answer is policy, legislation, uh, certainly not gun control because none of these uh, perpetrators and these evildoers were law-abiding citizens. So it's not as if they would have said, oh, well, uh, there's gun control or I can't purchase a weapon, therefore I'm not going to perpetrate this evil. They would have found a way. Okay. And as someone you've mentioned your, your service for the, the Secret Service, you were a, an agent for the U.S. Secret Service, you can provide some interesting insight here. There seems to be more tension right now in the United States than there has been in decades. If you could take the temperature of our nation right now, what would be your diagnosis of the situation that we're in? Uh, well, my diagnosis, I'm not a doctor, but if I can <laughs> pretend for a moment, Abigail, uh, my diagnosis, we have the flu. Uh, we have the flu in America. Now, the good news with the flu, uh, the flu can be overcome. Uh, or you can get much, much sicker. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the overall culture and the issues we're facing in America, I think there's polarization of politics. Um, there's a, a heightened rhetoric. That happens every election cycle, but this may be even more heightened than usual. And that's gone from just those running for office to those all throughout the country, just citizens on a day-to-day -day basis. And it doesn't help, quite frankly, when the individual occupying the Oval Office his rhetoric has been pointed more directly at law enforcement as opposed to those perpetrating evil. So you disagree with the president's message that he's been giving about these tensions and, and about the division in the country? Well, uh, over the course of his rhetoric with these instances, he's done more finger pointing at law enforcement than those that, who, those that have attacked those with a badge and a gun. You brought up politics, and I do want to get to the Republican National Convention, and with your knowledge and your insight of security, are you concerned about the safety of those in Cleveland right now for the RNC? Uh, concerned isn't a worry, and I think somebody may not have come safely. No, I, I don't have that concern. But again, as a former Secret Service agent, uh, you kind of get uh, paid to worry about things not everybody else worries sure. about. That's the one of the goals of the Secret Service. The Secret Service is in charge of Cleveland. They work with state and local law enforcement. There's law enforcement in Cleveland right now as far away as California 
have come in to help serve. So uh, I think it's going to be a safe convention. I think the Democrat convention will be safe as well. I certainly hope so. I pray so. Uh, but there are a lot of security measures in place. What kind of light can you shed or tell our viewers, someone who has not been a Secret Service agent, what's going on behind the scenes to make sure that this is a secure event? Because quite frankly, in times like this, one would think that that's a a pretty big target. Well, interestingly, as a Republican and as a public official, some folks think, well, why aren't you in Cleveland right now, Todd? Or how many conventions have you been to? I've been to one convention in my life, and it was as a Secret Service agent, oh, not wow, as okay. a delegate. Uh, so what's going on right now, it's layer upon layer upon layer, perimeter upon perimeter upon perimeter of law enforcement personnel and checkpoints upon checkpoints upon checkpoints. It starts at the very outer regions and then you work your way in. A lot of perimeters, a lot of security. And as you get closer, it goes from state and local. As you get closer, more of the Secret Service has control of the actual facility and the convention center. Okay, and there have already been protests in Cleveland. I believe they've been peaceful for, for the most part, people opposing Donald Trump. Do you think Donald Trump is the candidate to unite this country, this country that often seems so divided? Well, I think so, and I think this is his chance. This is his week. Uh, we've had a very long election process on both sides, uh, uh, both sides of the aisle, but I think this is his week to shine, if you will. It's his convention. It's a, whoever's the nominee it always becomes his or her convention. So this is his opportunity. I think he picked a great running mate and Mike Pence. I met Governor Pence last year in Indianapolis uh, at the governor's mansion when he hosted a lot of lieutenant governors there. A uh, fantastic choice. So I think the convention is off to a good start for the RNC. And uh, I think by Friday, you'll see a lot of unification and moving forward and talking about it changing our country. So you would endorse Donald Trump effectively? Um, well, uh, yes, I'm voting for Donald Trump. Okay. Uh, it, sending Hillary Clinton to the Oval Office would be a terrible mistake. What a, want to bring this up because this just came into our newsroom a little bit ago. Uh, there's a report that former U.S. Senator Tom Coburn would be open to accepting this nomination. He says he's not openly campaigning to be picked, but if the delegates in Cleveland drafted him, he would run. Your reaction to that? Well, I guess that's the exact opposite of Lyndon Johnson. If nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not <laughs> yes. serve. Uh, I'm not running, but if nominated, I might uh, entertain it, I guess, to paraphrase Dr. Coburn. I didn't learn that until I sat down and visit with you. Once again, I'm learning from Abigail Ogle. <laughs> this uh, is why you watch <laughs> Channel 5. That's right. Uh, so I think it's very interesting. He's served the country so well. I'm glad his health is strong enough sure. where he can consider this. Uh, I, I, don't, I have no... Uh, pertinent information to make a sound judgment call on what Dr. Coburn is interested in or what he would be willing to do.